Hello, Acceleration Nation. It is Lara Moto here and Melanie. Great Hello. to see you again. Welcome. Melanie is my favourite blood biker. Don't tell the others. Um, we've had a really, really, really special evening and we are going to take Gaza out on its first ride. So, Melanie, tell me about what we're going to do tonight. So, tonight is the first shift. First shift? First, first shift of the bike. Yeah. So, it's a christening weekend, basically. Okay, super um, special. So, 7 o'clock tonight, which is just gone. Literally seven, now. Literally now. So, we're waiting for the phones to ring because the shift starts and we're actually on shift now all the way through until 7 o'clock Monday morning. Right, okay. Um, and what it means is, as a blood biker, We'll be taking stuff to you know, all the hospitals in the area, okay. whatever's needed, yep. and Gaza will do us pride, we'll stick it on the back, yes. and away we'll go. Fantastic. So that's awesome, really excited. Melanie and I, Melanie and I are going to set up on the bikes now and get ready to go and do some blood biking. I'll see you in a bit. Yay! So before we start, you might be wondering why the bike is called Gaza. It's in honour of a brilliant man called Gary Scutcher, and why his name is emblazoned all over bike number 12. Sadly, he was involved in a tragic accident whilst riding his bike on holiday, and he passed away at 44 years old. He was in training to become a freewheeler's blood biker. As a passionate motorcycle enthusiast with the motivation to help others, becoming a volunteer seemed like a no-brainer. His family and friends wanted to ensure his wish to help freewheelers and blood bikes lives on, so they set about raising funds to buy a blood bike in his memory. Lots of activities took place in order to raise the money they needed, including a cycle marathon, birthday fundraisers, donations from his son's schools and donations more made on a Facebook fundraising page. The result has been a brand new bike. The formal handover of keys happened at the Fowler's Bike Night on 6th of September 2019 and ridden for the first time in this video. Here is a clip from that special evening. To know that there's a bike out there that's saved lives and it's got his name on it, well, he would just have a massive grin about that and I wouldn't be the end of it, to be honest. But um, he, I feel like he'll be riding with that rider and it's just with such huge emotion but with enormous amount of pride that I would like to present the keys to free wheelers um, so it's keys to gather. Thank you, thank you very much. If you skip to about 32 minutes into this video you can listen to Joe's beautiful tribute and also a few bits of footage from their son's starting revving and using the blue lights on Gaza's bike. Thank you, Gary and Joe. And that's us just leaving another brilliant bike night at Fowler's, clearly filmed before COVID. Um, I am following Melanie on the Yamaha MT-09 that Fowler's have kindly given me. So a little bit about freewheelers. They are 100% funded by volunteers and donators. As part of the COVID response, they have temporarily expanded their service to run 24-7 to help with PPE and the increased volume of COVID tests. The bikes are taking tests to isolated people and transporting them to testing labs. Some bikes have had their rear trays extended and they have purchased larger specialist transport bags like the one here on Gazers to cater for the volumes of test samples across their service areas. There are six operational bikes on duty every night to spread the increasing volume of calls even outside the COVID calls. You can find freewheelers online through their website or through Facebook uh, or Twitter. If you skip to about 27 minutes into the video, you'll see a handy guide on how you can start becoming a blood biker and how you'd go about getting your advanced motorcycling assessment. That could mean if you were successful, you could get to ride a bike like Gazza's. That is a Yamaha FJR 1300, 144 brake horsepower inline four. Great big lump of the bike and looks fantastic in the emergency services colors. Um, I am trying to follow uh, on the Yamaha MT-09 that uh, Fowlers had given me at an 850cc trip with about 114 brake horsepower. Fortunately, Melanie rides absolutely by the book, so I can keep up, but I'm pretty sure if she pulled the pin, I'd struggle a little bit. 
but it's fantastic to follow her and see how, how high her standard of riding is. So this is a video of a blood bike night with Melanie. Um, it's quite dark, so inevitably the GoPro doesn't quite work as well, and I've had to put subtitles over the audio just because it was quite difficult to pick up conversation as we um, visited the different hospitals and collection points. Um, so it's quite a long video, there's a lot of talking, but everything Melanie says is just phenomenal. She'll, she tells a fantastic story about the blood bikers and, and what they do, um, so I really, really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in any other motorbike videos, consider subscribing. Uh, just click on that subscribe button and ring that bell. On the back of this video, it might be worth a watch about the Great Western Air Ambulance Service, which I also had the luxury of visiting with Melanie's support. Now, the start of our night is actually at the Free Wheelers Super Sunday location. That's at Kings Oak Academy in Bristol. Um, but now we'll get back to the video and it will be Melanie's first controller call. Hello. Hello. You rang. Hi. Yeah, yeah, I'll take you on your All right, okay. Um, so, so, what was the job? Nothing. All right, okay, lovely. Get my pad out and then um, we'll, we'll go from there. How many calls have you had then? 14. 14. Where's all mine then? Well, you've got the one at the minute. <laughs> lovely. Why do you need to get a pad out? Um, so, basically, all the jobs we do, we have to have an audit trail for them. Ah, right. So, every job, um, the cold takes the phone call from who's calling in yeah and he'll just tell us where we've got to go what we're picking up um where we need to go and drop it off okay and then so every time we pick something up or hand it over there's a piece of paper so everyone's got an audit trail oh nice someone phones up later on and says you picked this up for me but it never arrived we can go back through and actually say yes we handed it to somebody and then oh yes i remember putting that on the shelf <laughs> got it so so what happens is if it's a non-urgent call which means we can do it in the next two to three hours the cohort and in my, my case Martin my hubby and he'll just text me with the job to say where I've got to go and what I've got to pick up and I'll just need to put it on our record form basically right okay um, and I know he's texted me because what he does he'll ring the phone so I can actually feel it okay some people have got bluetooth on um, I, I don't on my crash on it yeah but other people so you can just hear that way okay um, so I'll just quickly scribble who I am today's date time of call so we know how long the job's been going and then the three categories so urgent means the next two to three hours yeah non-urgent means sometime this evening or first thing in the morning um, and urgent or emergency means it needs to go now because it's like potentially life-threatening okay so, um get get going basically um whereas the other ones mean you can finish your cup of tea before you go okay so we're going from one of the local hospitals we're picking up stuff and we're going to one of our usual drop-offs which is the bri pathology so oh, right, okay. All blood samples will go to one of the pathology labs, Bristol Bath or Taunton, basically. So we know where we're actually going with it all the time. Okay. Um, so we'll go for a little wander up there, and that's all we need. So when we get to the, the place we're picking up from, we'll just give them a receipt and carry on for the next part of the journey. Super. Uh, and every time we do it, we have to tell our cohort we've picked up, dropped off, and then he can tell us if there's another job coming or whether we're free to carry on and do something else. Okay. Um, so anytime anybody knows where we are, and all the bikes have got trackers, so oh. should anything ever happen and the bikes suddenly stop moving, the car can see instantly and make contact with us to say, have you stopped in foot to tell me I've stopped? Um, or in worst case, if a bike's gone down or been involved in an accident, yep. we've actually got um, biker down mechanisms on now. So we'll actually get, a, the car will actually get an automatic wow. notification. So everything is about the safety of the rider. We got our first job from the controller and we're heading over to Callington Road Hospital. So this is Callington Road Hospital and so all different wards on here so often when we come to pick bloods up here there's often several wards at the same time that we collect right. bits and pieces from. Okay. So we'll go inside the building, um, fill in the paperwork, yep. pick up the bits and pieces we have to take away and then go to the next hospital. Great. Um, and the journey begins. <gasps> Oh, special bag. Special bag. So, um, basically, anything we carry needs to go inside a bag so that if anything does spill, it's contained within the bag. Yeah. And it's all to do with um, UN 3373 rules. So, basically, everything has to be triple packaged so that 
the Panurax is one, the Bagel Act is another, and whatever they give it to us will be the third. Oh. So it's all safety basically yeah. all the way through again. Yeah. Um, so we'll. Oh, you're you're right. Right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, I know. Good fun, though. <laughs> it's a very big bike. <laughs> and right. Ready? Okay. I'm going to follow you in now. So we've just now got our first bag of first samples. Bag so of I actually samples. didn't realise it was going to be samples. I thought it would be like... Like actual bags of the donation blood that yeah. I carried. Oh, right, okay. No, it's like this samples, um, medication, anything that fits on a bike we'll take out of ours. Ah, basically. right. So most of the blood we do is samples. So the NHS do Monday, like Monday to Friday, nine till five or eight till five, yeah, whatever. Hospital yeah. Day, um, and then out of hours, so we come on at seven. Other blood so blood every course. evening? Every evening. Seven till. Days. Seven till when? Um, seven at night till seven in the morning will be our weekday shift. And so the guys will do that Monday to Thursday. Right. And then on weekend we come on seven o'clock Friday night. And so technically I'm on shift now until seven o'clock Monday morning. And we run 24-7 every weekend. Wow. And this is you volunteering your free time? Yeah. And you do not get paid for this at no, all? No, the whole, the whole charity is all funded it's all by fun. volunteers. Right. Yeah. Wow. That's fascinating. Yeah, and really... Really a generous, I guess. Yeah. But, but I said for us, it's in, as bikers, we're more susceptible to being on the end of the requirement for blood, should we say, sometimes. Got it. So, okay. So it's almost the catch 22. Yeah. That you want to put something back into the community. Yeah. Should there ever something happen in the future, yeah. you might need it back the other way. Got it. Um, and that's why we do a lot with the air ambulances, both yeah. in Western and Wiltshire. Yeah. Um, we link up with them and deliver blood to them every night. So they've got blood on board with their ambulances ah. so they can treat at the scene um, as well. And we're sort of one of the early groups that started doing that as well. So Amazing. This, um, yeah, it's I'm all for a good cause and it's all charities, including the ambulances. Obviously, it's all charities, supporting charities. Yeah, supporting I'm, the biking community. I'm starting to appreciate the bigger picture of what this involves now. Yeah. Great. And now we're off to the BRI. So, to the BRI. so sometimes it can be busy in there. Um, sometimes you can get straight in, so we might have a little bit of a wait to hand over because obviously they've got real patients coming in needing it. Yeah. Do you have quite? Do people recognise like who how special you are? Um, yeah, we often get sort of thank yous as we get stuff for. Yeah. Um, particularly sort of a lot of the nurses that we interface with on day to day basis. Yeah. Um, it's really all thank you very much for doing this, so, and especially in the hospices as well. So because obviously, obviously it's life limiting they're dealing with, so they appreciate what we do because it's they can focus on the people there and then that need it as well wow um, so yeah it's always that the extra bit isn't it yeah it's just nice to do got it okay right picked up off to the eye and i'll wait for him to reply and say okay or you've got another job so i don't go there and have to go up on a different direction again afterwards Oh, right, so you should be quite clever. <laughs> yeah, because it's not efficient, is it? Yeah. Okay. And I usually get a J or a K because you can't spell OK. <laughs> <laughs> okay, That's going on right, the camera. Right, we're, good, we're good to go. <laughs> that is definitely going on YouTube. <laughs> Indeed, why I'm here. Because it's the first job. Yeah, first job with Gaza. Gaza looks good. It does. Rides lovely as well. Yeah, nice and smooth. Yeah. So that's drop off number one for Gaza. Yeah, definitely. Um, Quite a big sample as well. Big loads yeah, of. Yeah, loads of... And I said, you never know when you go to anyone what you're picking up, how many you're going to have. Yeah. Oops, sorry. Is, um, <laughs> so that's the co op job when they phone up and say, I've got delivery or collection. Yeah. His first question should be, will it fit on a bike? <laughs> really? Because <laughs> we have had them. We've had, for example, patients on stretchers, which I said would be very interesting filtering if you tag them on. Um, patients or wheelchairs, and I said, and if it's got a tow bar, you can hook it on the back. <laughs> so, so you never know what you're going to get. Um, but as long as it's needed medically for someone, 
um, we got don't it. do personal effects or anything like that, they get left behind because we're an emergency service, so yeah. we need to be ready to go. So you said how many bikes are out at the moment? Um, there's also four bikes on duty. Four bikes on time. duty, and so three out on the road and one in terms of emergency? Yeah, so, so if the volumes go up, then he'll, or they'll basically fill in the gaps. Yeah. Um, that bike tends to do the evening air ambulance drops as well. Right. Because like that's a 100 mile round trip. So it lets one bike go off and do that. Yeah. It's a circuit. And yeah. then keeps the others free to roam. Locally to do all the local hospitals and that's where they're needed. Um, and when the volumes go really, really high, then our volunteers and charity, they will often do extra jobs on their own bikes because it's more convenient. So tonight, why I've been up here, because my patch covers Western, and we've had one rider who's used his own bike locally to do a quick Western to Western job. Ah, right. So we didn't have to go 20 miles down the motorway to do the job, basically. Right. But, but they work so that everybody helps each other out. Is that because you've got a pickup depot? Um, no. Like no, a bike no. depot, sorry. No, we don't. So everyone's got their own bike at their own premises. So, so that so Gaz, where does Gaza live? Um, so that come that'll stay in my my garage overnight. Oh until right, my okay. Finishes. Yeah. And then I'll hand it on to the next rider that goes on duty on Monday. Oh, and then they look after and it. Like pass the parcel with the bikes. Oh, yeah. okay. So so the, the trick for us is when we get it, make sure it's roadworthy. So you yes. do like a safety check over the yeah. bike. Is it fit to ride? Yeah. Um, and then when we hand it off, we'll do the same. Make sure it's got fuel in it, and give it a wash so it always looks sparkly and you've got a good presence on the road. All oh, right, so there's actually quite a lot of bike maintenance and discipline yeah. In, yeah. in this charity as well, yeah, in the spirit definitely. of things. We've actually got a bike maintenance team that manage the fleet for us. Oh, so right. Four of them do a really good job um, making sure it gets in for servicing when the MOT yeah. is due, um, right. the insurance, etc. So we always know when we pick a bike up, it's good to go. And it's you look after the next rider as well? Then, yeah, and pass it on from there. So. Got it. So, so I must remember to tell my cohort. Job dropped off. Job done. Okay, right. And Let's go and do that. Yay! Loving that triple hum of the MT09 and some great shots again of Melanie leaving on the Yamaha. We head back to Melanie's house for a quick cup of tea and a review of the evening so far. been a really really awesome night with Melanie we've done one job this evening the first shift yep. with Gaza yes how's Gaza been to ride Gaza's been perfect to ride really smooth yeah. and nice so yeah def definitely coming out for a ride with us and keeping us in control so really enjoyed the Taking um on his first trip yeah it it sounded lovely as well just just a really steady pull away and what I found with Melanie is I had to it was like being on my um, big bike test again. <laughs> Melanie is, is, is by the book and it's, it's definitely brought a sense of perspective and that you don't need to get carried away on a bike. You can just ride to the limit and yeah. do the, be legal and still carry critical fluids around and get them to where they need to be safely. Yeah, so, and that's the whole point. So that's why everyone does advanced riding, basically. So it makes your ride smooth, safe. Make sure you're saying. Make, makes your ride smooth and safe, but also you can progress through the traffic without, yes. without being um, an interference to other riders and you're gone before they've even realised you were behind them and in front of them again. So yes. It just keeps it nice and smooth and Gaza did his stuff tonight. Gaza did. It was awesome. And I, it was actually quite surprising to see how people reacted with you. So you, you obviously, you're really bright, really visible and yeah. you got a nod from a police vehicle, didn't you? Yeah, and ambulance. there's a, <laughs> yeah, and an ambulance, and you get a lot of natural respect from the people that are c you're collecting from and the people yeah. you're delivering to. Like, they know what you're doing, they know your volunteers and what this means yeah. to them and to you, arguably. Yeah, and that's what makes it nice as well. So it's not a case of you turn up and they go, oh, grunt, and you go off again. You usually have some sort of verbal interaction with people. So, like I said, the guy today... So the guy today. So, so like the guy today in the BRI was thank you very much for what doing what you're doing. Yes. Um, so they they all know their part in the process as well because obviously they're happy to receive the goods from us. Yes. And then pass it on to the porters or whoever to take it on to the next the next step really as well. Um, so it's good. But the but the thing is you talked about the police and the ambulance waving yes. at you. It's great in one of these, but then when you're on your own bike you forget and you wave at them and they think what is that person <laughs> waving at me? <laughs> so you awesome. have to remember which, which which role you're in. <laughs> yes. Yes, I don't have a massive yellow bike covered yeah. in high vis. Yeah, why why not? 
<laughs> um, got it. So, um, Melanie, you're actually a bit of a biker yourself. So we're at your, your place now. What yeah. bikes do you have? So I've got a Kawasaki Versys okay. myself, a um, thousand. So yeah. um, put a few fair miles on that, do a lot of touring, commuting and rider training yes. with it as well. And you go to Spain every go year? Go to Spain every year. So yeah. yeah, we're off again soon just for a nice tour around um, and put the bike through the paces basically. Yeah. Actually, safely and applying all the rider training that we've yeah. done as well. So it's, it's real I good fun. need to get on that course. Yes, definitely recommend it. <laughs> Um, so now back at your house, your partner Martin yes. is kind of on the on the on the phone all the time. What's yeah. his role? So what happens? All the hospitals have a free phone number that they'll dial, and that gets diverted to our controller basically. So Martin is in control of all the four bikes on shift tonight. So you've got four on shift. So four on shift. Yep. Um, if the calls go up, then he can call some of our other volunteers, and they'll go on their own bikes. If there's like a local job, which someone's done for us tonight, we mentioned yep. it earlier. Yes. Um, <clears throat> And then his job really is to assess will what they're requesting fit on the bike in the first place. Um, if it will, will it fit? Will it fit? <laughs> yeah. Is it safe for us to ride? So it may fit, but does it weigh half a ton? In which case, yes. obviously, we can't take it. Um, and then it's a case of is it urgent that needs to go on a bike? Um, if it's personal possessions, we won't take them so that the bike is all ready to go for something else. Um, if it fits on the bike, then he has to decide which bike is best placed to take it. Got it. Most efficiently, basically. Got it. And it may be a handover even between two riders. So if I'm going to Bristol to Plymouth, yeah, it may be I hand over to someone in Devon or Cornwall or wherever, whichever direction we're going in. Okay. And rumour has it you're a walking sat nav, so you don't need to use any sat nav <laughs> at all. No, I've got an inbuilt GPS. For inbuilt some GPS. Yeah. I mean that's that's quite exclusive. I want one of them. <laughs> I'll patent it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Everybody moans at me because whenever I go anywhere, particularly abroad, um, I always use a paper map. I've never relied on the sat nav because if the battery goes. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You need to know where you are. Yeah. And, and I get this feeling, if I go in the wrong direction, it doesn't take long before I think, this doesn't quite... This doesn't this quite... This doesn't quite feel right. Um, and it really annoys other people. So. <laughs> <laughs> so if I come out, I get my map out and my colouring pens and I'm sorted. Right, okay. <laughs> you, you've coloured it in. Me. Cool. Yeah. So um, we, what time is it now? So we started at seven. It's yeah. so it, about half seven really. And yeah. it's now just coming up to 11 o'clock. How long are you on for tonight? So my, my the shift for me officially finishes at seven o'clock Monday morning. So okay. it's, it's a long weekend shift, but in reality, the calls probably stop around about half 11-ish, something like that. Right, okay. Um, we get some urgent handovers usually around about two o'clock in the morning. Right. Um, could be because of shift changes in the various hospitals. They need to get yeah. the stuff out. Um, so. So I need to gesticulate more so to get stuff out so, so if there's urgent stuff coming particularly into NHSBT down at Filton right we often get samples coming in there that they need to clone whatever the magic stuff they do in there got it um, otherwise it'll be probably seven o'clock in the morning the calls will start ringing again coming in again um, okay and then we'll work out who's going to go where and so go again. it's your weekend shift that's what once or twice every three months is it um, that's what I put myself down for yeah um, I couldn't do it during the week because of my day job. Yeah. But on the weekend, I can I can plan that in advance and say I'm going to commit all this to free wheelers. Um, and so if there's no job, so tomorrow, for example, if there's nothing comes in, then we've got some fundraising activities. So I can go along there and actually help them um, do a bit of fundraising with got the bike, bike there as well. So it all sort of links in with all the volunteers. <laughs> so it all links in. So it all links in with all the volunteers doing their various roles. Um, and Martin again is coward. Not only does he need to know where the four bikes are, he needs to know who's got bikes for fundraising and where everybody else is. Again, duty of care for the charity. Got it. And now you were recently uh, elected to chair. What yes. does that involve? So, uh, <clears throat> for me, second year I've been doing it. So, okay. it's really making sure that we've got all our policies in place, working with the rest of the committee and all the other volunteers, just to make sure our sort of ethos of going out there and providing the service for all the local hospitals. We can actually do it we've got the fleet to do it we've got the personnel to do it everybody's trained it properly and really to try and help people have fun doing it yeah because in the summer it's lovely riding across the yeah summer set level the evening the was lovely as down. well yeah um in the middle of winter when the rain's lashing at you sideways you do question i volunteer for this yes remind me why so for do you us, know i can see that actually because it's all right this tonight but the true commitment happens when it's not convenient it's anymore. Not, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and that's when we need to make especially care sure that people are happy doing what they're doing, they're yeah. equipped to do what they do. But but also we, for us, it's the call to sort of say actually it's too dangerous, so we're going to take the service down. 
<clears throat> so we'll take the service down. Yeah. So when we have the floods across the Somerset levels, obviously you won't go really? through high water. No. Uh, <clears throat> or when the winds are four scales, it's unsafe to take a bike in those conditions. So it's common sense. So the first thing will be our riders will take their own cars. Um, so quite a few of them will oh, do okay. that. Yep. They've got four wheel drive, so they'll actually come in and help the charity. To right, keep so you've got other options. Um, if it's really, really bad and you can't get anywhere, we'll take the service off. And then Wessex 4x4, another charity. So their team, oh, we often right. see them on the news helping nurses get to hospitals. So there's a snowball oh, effect. Okay. Yeah. And a lot of our volunteers are in Wessex 4x4 as well. So right. it's a big, big cycle of big charities again. Happy, supportive circle. Yeah. Great. Well, I'll draw this conversation to a close. Um, we're going to go out tomorrow and, yeah. and see a little bit of the bigger picture with the air ambulance. Um, and yeah, so basically go see air ambulance yeah. would be, be awesome. So as you see stuff, is that, is that still samples being transported? No, it's, that... um, what they, we deliver to the air ambulance is blood products. So they can actually... Blood products. Blood products. They can actually pump it into somebody on the roadside, basically. Um, and fresh frozen plasma as well to sort of help with the clotting factors, wow. etc. So, so it's key for them, for the paramedics, to actually be able to do stuff at the roadside. Um, so we do that to both Great Western and Wiltshire Air Ambulances every night of the year. So just to so we clarify, you collect from the Air Ambulance and you take so, it so, to the road? So, um, so what we do is we take blood from South Mead Hospital, from this, the one place. Right. So we take all the fresh blood, etc. that they're going to use for the Air Ambulance. We take it to them. If there's a road traffic incident or anything and the person needs extra blood, yeah. they'll put it into the individual there. Um, if they don't use that blood for over that 24 week cycle, we'll collect it the following night and take it back to the hospital. Then it goes back into store the system. and used yeah. in the hospital. So, so nothing's actually wasted. Do you see accidents then? Um, not ourselves directly no. um, get involved with the air ambulance on the roadside, no. as it were. So we would do all the drops at their bases. Right, okay. Um, if, if we need to meet halfway somewhere, we'll do that. But we never go into a scene because obviously they're trying for it, we're not. Yeah. So yeah. we'll always be removed from it. Keep Someone will back. come and collect it from us at a boundary Got somewhere. Got it. Oh, off, off a boundary. Yeah. Right, okay. Now yeah. I get it. Got it. Because I guess the motorbike cause can have access to where a helicopter can't. Is that yes. roughly the whole point of that? Um, yeah, so, so when um, <clears throat> the helicopters can't fly, so sometimes they, some don't fly at night, or it's a short distance, particularly in the city centre, they'll use their, they've got four by four cars themselves, so oh, you'll okay. see the paramedics out on a vehicle getting there, got it. so that's when they can come and actually meet us. Awesome. If we need to. Okay, well, Mel, it's been a really, really enlightening evening. I know I've asked a lot of questions, but I've learned no, so much sorry. more about what you do and what it means to be a freewheeler and a blood biker. Um, and so it's been an absolutely great privilege to be with you this evening. Um, thank you very much. No, you're welcome. Yeah. And thank you for following around with me. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> Good. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> well thank you for watching uh, amazing story of a blood bike night I'm now going to flick back to the rest of the video which is me meeting Melanie for the first time at the Bristol Bike Show and she'll give you an overview of the freewheelers and also show you how to become an advanced motorcycle rider Hello. Hi. My name is Lara. What's your name? I'm Melanie. Robertson. Melanie. Yeah. I'm going to shake the puppet's hand. Hello, puppet. And what's his name or her? Kezzy. Kezzy. Right, nice. Pod mascot. Um, awesome. So, Melanie, tell me about why you're here today um, and, uh, and what their blood bikes mean to you. Okay. So, um, Free Wheelers are a blood bike charity. Free so Wheelers? Free Wheelers. Is your charity. It's a charity okay. name, yeah. So, complete run my volunteers. Uh, we've been going for just over 27 years now um, and we come down here every year just to promote what we do, right. try and seek more volunteers to sort of get involved and the purpose of the charity is we run an out of hours delivery service between all the hospitals and hospices right. across the area. Um, we run seven at night to seven in the morning so wow. we're, often, we're a, an unseen charity basically. So we come down here just to promote what we do and like I say, get volunteers to ride, answer the phones from the hospitals okay. or to help with the fundraising basically. Sound. So if I wanted to volunteer, I need a full bike licence. Um, you need an advanced rider qualification. Right, okay. So part of it is we, we set up next to the IM, Road Smart Group next door. Right. So if people want to get more uh, an advanced riding qualification, they can chat to them, yes. get a discount today as well. Um, and then when they've got the advanced riding qualification, it allows them to actually ride the bike. Bikes, so and that's and I'll take photos of this, but that's riding your blood bikes essentially. Yes. Yeah. So the, and the blood bikes we've got are FJR 1300s, 
Okay, so got if, it. If people haven't ridden the big bikes before, then we give them a big bike training, basically, yep. as well. Nice. Um, but and it's also like a social community as well. So we've got about 120 ish members, or volunteers, I should say. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the fundraising is real good social side of it, as you can see. <laughs> yes. I'll let the loud bikes go by. Yeah, it's, it's always quite hard to tricky, but I can edit quite a lot yeah. of it out. But yeah, they are big and loud. Uh, and within the charity, like I said, we've got three key roles. Yep. Um, and often you find that partners actually do it. So for myself, I ride the blood bikes. Yeah. But my husband, he actually mans the phones. So when the hospital's phoning on a free number, he quite happily... But you're out on the bikes. Like, he kicks me out of bed and says, yes. off you go, yes. sort of thing, in the middle of the night. Um, so, so it works good because you're both going to get woken up, so you might as well both get involved in And the that's the team bit that makes it exactly, work. Exactly, exactly. Got it. So there's lots of couples that do it, so it's good fun. Awesome. I've learned so much in chatting to you. Um, the club mascots. Kezi. Kezi. Goodbye, Kezi. Um, so, <laughs> Melanie, awesome to meet you. Great to meet Kezi. That's fantastic. Um, and thank you very much for talking to me. My name's Lara, what's your name? I'm Anne. Hi Anne, yeah. lovely to meet you. So you're here in Corn Street today representing Advanced Motorcyclists. Yeah, we're part of the Bristol Advanced Motorcyclist Group. Bristol so Advanced Motorcyclist Group, right. right, got it. We're affiliated with the IAM, so yeah. basically um, we're the Bristol Group that promotes the road, si road safe um, skills for life course for motorcyclists. Got it. So I've just met Melanie, she yeah. told me all about the blood bikes. Yeah. Now what do you do along with the blood bike organisation? Right, well we get quite a lot of um, people come and join the IAM because they want to become a blood bike rider. Right. So in order to do the, um, the blood bikes they have to have passed an advanced course first. So they come to us, they go through our Skills for Life course and then they can go on and volunteer as a blood bike rider. Got it, sorted. So, so how many members do you have at the moment? Well, I think we're at about 300 members. Wow, right? okay. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, it's quite a big group. Awesome. And what do you personally do with the group? Um, I, I'm in the events team. Yeah. So I organise all events of this. Like we yeah. are here today. Got it. Yes. Awesome. Well, I hope you've got enough footfall here and more people are interested. Yeah, we've done very well here today. So that's good. It's all about promoting bike safety and trying yep. to keep people safe on the road. Yeah, and that's truly what yeah, matters. That's our aim. Yeah, definitely. Got it. Well, and absolutely awesome to meet you and thank you very much for talking to me. You're very Cheers. Welcome. Here is Joe's full story about how the money was raised for Gaza's motorbike. And there's also a few clips of her sons using the blue lights on the number 12 bike uh, and revving the engine, uh, much to everyone's delight. He started riding when he was about 15 and travelled to lots of countries, often with me on back um, on motorbike. Um, he'd say I'm being really cheesy, but I think motorbikes are in his blood. And um, anyone who thought of that probably pretty quickly thought of motorbikes straight after. So. Um, the day before Gaz had his accident, he sent off an application to become a blood biker and um, he, he was really excited about joining them and helping people. He was a really kind and generous man and he'd done a lot of charity work um, through Lloyds Bank where he worked um, but also on his own back and um, he just wanted to help people and um, make a difference I suppose. So for him to be able to help people and potentially save lives um, and ride a bike at the same time, well, that was just the ultimate dream. And um, so obviously, sadly, he didn't get to live that dream. And so we made the decision to um, do fundraising and um, get donations so that we could give money in lieu of Gaz's time that he wanted to give. Um, so, I mean, I set up a page and people really kindly donated, but from there, other people, um, his um, friend from university raised a lot of money in doing a um, London to Brighton cycle ride, and um, his Facebook pages, um, the boys' school raised money, the Christmas concert, um, and Lloyd's Bank um, had a full day um, dedicated to raising money in memory of Gaza. Um, they cycled the 12 hour cycle in the London, Bristol, and Empire. Really, really grateful to everybody who put in the effort and um, made the donations. 
it goes to show what people thought of him. And um, he would just, he would rather be riding that bike, obviously, but um, to know that there's a bike out there that's saved lives and has got his name on it, well, he would just have a massive grin about that. And I wouldn't be the to be honest. But um, he, I feel like he'll be riding with that rider and it's just with such huge emotion, but with enormous amount of pride that I would like to present the keys to free wheelers. Um, so it's the keys to gather. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something. Take care and hope to see you soon.